In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful, praise be to God, Lord of the universe. He is the one and only God, the absolute God. Never did he beget, nor was he begotten. None equals him. O people of the scripture, let us come to a logical agreement between us and you that we shall not worship except God, that we never idolize any human beings as Lord beside God. If you turn away, then bear witness that we are submitters. If you refuse to accept this invitation, then bear witness that we only submit to the Lord of the universe, the creator of all things. O children of Adam, O children of Adam, our God is one and the same God. There is no other God beside God. And those who are tearing us into pieces between religions, sects, and denominations do not belong with God. They belong with Satan. In my last uh, video presentation, I pointed out at the fact that among the people there are those who are misguided, completely misguided. They think that they are following the guidance that came through Prophet Muhammad, when in reality, in truth, they are going against what the Prophet stood for. I pointed out uh, the fact, uh, the fact that uh, these people, majority of the people who call themselves Muslims, they are not really following the teachings that came through Prophet Muhammad, the Quran, but they are following their religious scholars, religious teachers, religious leaders who decree for them religious laws never authorized by God. So, in effect, they are not Muslim to God, they are not submitters to God, they are submitters to their ayatollahs and muftis and so on and so forth. I pointed out at the fact that in the day of resurrection, Prophet Muhammad would say, my Lord, my people have deserted this Quran, chapter 25, verse number 30. Prophet Muhammad is not going to say, my Lord, my people did not uh, rise against those who threw insults at me. Uh, they are not going to. Uh, he's, uh, so he's not going to say that, uh, my Lord, uh, my people failed to go kill the people who were not respectful of me. He would say, my people deserted this Quran. My people have deserted this Quran. Instead of Quran, they have been following their own nonsense, hadith and sunnah, and so on and so forth. Now, in this uh, presentation, I want to concentrate at the people who do anything for the sake of profit, money. And of course, with money comes power. Uh, these people, for the sake of money and power, they do anything, even if they really find out that what they're doing is against God and what God has sent down for us. Now, uh, who are these people? Most of the people who uh, get involved in, in uh, uh, throwing insults and at Prophet Muhammad uh, are they among the Christians, the Jews? If you check these people out consistently, you will find that they are connected with a cult uh, of Zionism. Uh, Zionism that, that was uh, initially uh, born in Vienna, Austria. The people who uh, do this, they have learned the weakness of the Mohammedans, the people who think they love Muhammad, when in reality they really don't, uh, because they are not following the teachings that came down through Prophet Muhammad. Uh, they are just giving a lip service. So 
these guys, these Zionists, they have found out the weakness of the other side. They know if they provoke them, and uh, they're going to, these Mohammedans are going to be going totally out of their way and do uh, absolutely un-Islamic things. And in a way, these Zionists become winners because they show the rest of the world that look at this religion uh, and, uh, and uh, because of it, they come up with pictures of Prophet Muhammad, uh, make fun of him and make ugly picture of him because of the ugly behavior of those who call themselves uh, uh, presumably uh, Muslims. Prophet Muhammad is not here uh, to defend himself against these devils. Uh, Prophet Muhammad is not in here to tell those uh, people who keep on saying peace be upon him, peace be upon him, to tell them to shut up and instead follow the teaching that was sent down to me. Stop being a Shia Sunni because there is no such thing in the Quran. Prophet Muhammad would tell him that, look, I was not Shia or Sunni. I was a submitter to God alone. I was a Muslim. Now, to these people, that they threw all kind of ugly nonsense at him, make videos and uh, make cartoons uh, and to provoke uh, the so-called Muslims uh, to do uh, un-Islamic things. Uh, I say, shame on you, because, uh, look, if you have a problem with the people who say, who do things and uh, deal with them, why do you go after someone who is not in here to tell them and you that, look, these behavior, these actions have absolutely nothing to do with the teachings of the Quran. In this uh, uh, video presentation, I want to concentrate with this issue. Before I go uh, and uh, show some verses in the Torah, in the Gospel and the Torah, that actually Prophet Muhammad was prophesied, I want to uh, draw to your attention to this fact. Zionism has absolutely nothing to do with Judaism. Actually, Zionism is the number one enemy of Judaism. Uh, the Zionists, uh, uh, as we have them now, uh, they are number one enemy of Jewish people, real good Jewish people. Uh, in uh, 1864, a gentleman was born in uh, Vienna, Austria. His name was Nathan Birnbaum. And he's the one who coined the term Zionist in 1890 and it is noteworthy that uh, one year before that in 1889 Hitler was also born in Austria these movement and their elements have absolutely nothing to do with the original children of Israel uh, the person whose name was changed from Jacob, Ya'aqub, to Israel. And then what happened though, this gentleman, Nathan Bourbon, he really had a good intention and he was trying to be helpful to the Jewish people. But then the mission was uh, hijacked by a bunch of human devils who were not really Jewish at all. They were not following the Torah. Uh, these guys, uh, for instance, their leader that is known as the leader of Zionism, uh, Theodor Herzl, or Herzl, uh, he was uh, a self-proclaimed atheist. 
He did not believe in Judaism. He wrote a book, The Jewish Estate, in uh, 1896, and uh, his mission was to establish a country, a power, by all means and at all costs. In the process, millions of the real good Jewish people were victimized. I will, God willing, in my next uh, video presentation, uh, concentrate on this and show you the uh, evil nature of this satanic cult. But uh, the heart of this video is going to be focused on some of the facts that I will show you in the gospel and in the Torah and then in the gospel, Torah and the gospel combined that actually uh, talks about the prophecy that the prophet Muhammad was indeed the Gentile prophet that was uh, uh, came after Jesus. Uh, I'm going to take you to two verses in the Quran which are extremely significant because uh, when I, I'll take you, show you the same number in the Torah uh, later on. Chapter 5, uh, verses 15 and 16. O people of the scripture, our messenger has come to you to proclaim for you many things you have concealed in the scripture. Now you see the focus of this verse is that about the things that they have concealed in the scripture and to pardon many other transgressions you have committed. A beacon has come to you from God and a profound scripture. If you note in here in this verse God is pointing at something that is a messenger at the same time is a message. It is the Quran. The Quran is not a regular book. It is a living book. It is beyond human knowledge. It is beyond the probability that it could possibly be a human manufacture. And people who are not sincere in heart, they will not be able to have access into this Quran. Because it is a living book. It is something miraculous about this book that a lot of people cannot even touch it, understand it. By touching it is not a physical touch, but touching the meaning of it uh, because they are not sincere. The next verse, it points at what this Quran is going to do. With it, with this Quran, God guides those who seek his approval, he guides them to the path of peace, leads them out of darkness into the light by his leave, and guides them in a straight path. This verse is 516. I'm going to ask you, please pay attention to this number, because I will show you the same exact number in the Torah about something that these people have concealed in the scripture. Now, I'm going to, at this point, I want to show you some verses in the gospel. Of course, uh, uh, Almighty God in the Quran says that uh, concerning the Messiah, uh, son of Mary, Jesus, uh, that they have given him the Jesus name uh, about him God Almighty says that he taught him the Torah and gave him the gospel there is no the, the so called Christians have no such document that they could say this is the gospel of Jesus they have four gospels according to this according to that according to this according to that. And these are the Gospels that they accepted in Nicene Conference, which was 325 AD. It was a political move. I will get to that also in my future 
presentations. But, but basically what I'm going to be showing you in here, obviously the Jewish people, and definitely not the Zionists, they are not going to believe these things because this is the book that they don't believe. Actually, if you go on a YouTube and, uh, uh, and put down, uh, we killed Jesus and we are proud of it, you see that it's going to take you to those Zionist devils who proclaim that they killed Jesus and they are uh, proud of their doing and they'll do it again. But anyhow, so they're not going to believe this, but I'm going to show you uh, these verses and then I will go back to the Torah as well. If you go to uh, Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 19, and uh, it says, and this is the record of John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? Because John, of course, remember these names, these Roman names were adopted later on. They put a J in front of everybody, like Joseph, John, Jesus, Joshua, so on and so forth. But Yahya in Arabic, his name is Yahya, and he was the son of Zechariah. Uh, and so they're asking him, who are you? You see, at the time, uh, you could basically divide the Jewish uh, people to three groups. There were Pharisees, Sadducees, and there were Essenes. And of course, uh, John, for the sake of, uh, you know, what is known now, I don't want to go back, I would just want to call him John, uh, that uh, John was among the, uh, among the Essenes. They were the ones who were not playing ta paying taxes to the Romans, and they were rebellious against the, the Roman domination. They were deep into the Torah, and uh, they were learned, and they were basically righteous people. So these people send a representative to John and say, Who are you? Uh, you know, you come out of nowhere and you're telling us to repent and repent and you're baptizing people in here. Who are you? And uh, he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, what then? Are you Elias? In the new version of the, uh, the last version of the Bible that I have in here, they say instead of Elias, they say Elijah. It doesn't matter. And then he, he said, uh, no, I'm not. And they say, are you that prophet? And he answered, no. Then they said to him, uh, who are you that we may give an answer to them that send us? What do you say of yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make us tread the way of the Lord, as it was said by the prophet Isaiah or Esaias. And they which were sent were of the Pharisees. And they asked him and said unto him, uh, Why are you baptizing then, if you are not the Christ, not nor Elias, neither that prophet? Now, you see, these people, the Pharisees, uh, they need. They, they know that. Uh, they knew the Torah, and uh, basically, on the basis of the information they had, they were expecting, waiting for three individuals: the Messiah, and then, of course, uh, Elias, and then that prophet. Who is that prophet? Of course, if you tell the Christians uh, who was that prophet, they're going to tell you that was Jesus. And you're going to say, well, how could he be the Christ in the same uh, verse and then that prophet at the same time? Basically, what's wrong with the so-called Christians is that they're wearing a glass. Uh, on it is written Jesus. So whichever direction they look at, that's all they see, Jesus. So question, he said, I am not the Christ. And of course, he did not claim that he was Elias, and he said he was not that prophet either. But you see, later on, Jesus himself clarifies this issue. If you go to Matthew, uh, Gospel of Matthew, chapter 17, verse number 10, you see, 
in here the the uh, disciples of course they believed they knew that uh, uh, Jesus was indeed the Messiah but they, they said well but these people say Elias should come first uh, you we know you're the Messiah but what about Elias and uh, he said uh, that Elias had already come but they knew him not uh, and his disciples asked him, saying, Why do the scribes say that Elias must come first? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Elias truly shall come first and restore all things. But I say unto you that Elias has come already. But they did not know him. They knew him not. And they did to him whatever they could. And of course, you know Yahya, John the Baptist was beheaded in in the prison uh, because of a, a, a dancer that he had uh, she had asked for his head so in here Jesus is clarifying he said well look we know that the Messiah was indeed Jesus the son of Mary and then Jesus himself says that Elias had already come and they knew him not. And when he said that to his disciples, the disciples said, Oh, they understood that he was talking about John the Baptist. So John the Baptist came first. Then came Jesus. And then who is that prophet? Who is that prophet? That's a question that the sincere-hearted people need to ask the religious leaders, the scholars in Christianity. Who is that prophet that should come after Jesus? Now, now I'm going to take you to uh, uh, some other verses in, uh, in, in the Torah. This was in the gospel. The Jewish people obviously do not believe in this, but I'm going to take you to the gospel now. I mean, I'm going to take you to, to the Torah. If you go to Isaiah chapter 42 uh, verses uh, 1 uh, and, and see what this one says. It says, Behold my servant whom I uphold my elect in whom my soul delighteth, I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. Now, if really, if you see, God really is paying a lot of attention to this person. It says, he is my elect. In whom my soul delighteth, I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. Now, of course, uh, the, the Jewish people and the Christians would very much want to claim this chosen one to be of their side. But we're going to see what God has put in the verses that follows to make sure that we know who that person was. But in here, what happens is that in the new version, you see these Christians in here, I've been here almost uh, this uh, June 16th, a uh, couple of days from now. It's going to be 46 years since I set foot on the soil of this United States. And the Bible that you see, the new Bibles, is they, they keep on changing. Every time there is a question in here, like in here, it says the Gentile. Obviously, uh, by the, with the knowledge that they have about the Gentile, they are not going to be saying that, well, this was a Jew because they think... Uh, somebody has got to be either Jew or a Gentile. Although we know there are Gentiles among the Jews, that Gentiles means someone who has not knowledge, does not have the knowledge of the scripture. But then uh, with their understanding, you can say, well, look, this couldn't be from the uh, seed of Isaac, because it says Gentiles, you know, by, the, by your own definition. But let's read some verses in here. Thus says God the Lord, he that created the heavens and stretched them out, he that spread forth 
the earth and that which comes out of it. He that gives breath unto the people upon it and a spirit to them that walk therein. Verse number six. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness, will hold your hand, will keep you, and give you for the covenant of the people, for the light of the Gentiles. Now, obviously, this person is very important. Now, go through the entire Bible, the Old Testament and New Testament, and find out someone else that has been really given this much weight by Almighty God that God says my elect in whom my soul delighteth and it says will hold your hand will keep you and give you for the covenant of the people for the light of the Gentiles so who is this person the Christians in here again say that's Jesus and we're going to say, hey, since when Jesus was a Gentile? Let me read a few more verses after that. That this person comes in here to do what? To open the blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners from the prison, and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. Almighty God says, I'm the Lord, that is my name and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Behold, the former things are come to pass, and new things do I declare before they, they spring forth. I tell you of them. Sing unto the Lord a new song, and his praise from the end of the earth. You that go down to the sea, and all that is therein, the isles, and the inhabitants thereof. Now, like I said, the Jewish people and the so-called Christians would very much love to claim that this person was one of his own. And uh, they don't want to give it up. But I've got a question for you. If a person that God says he's my elect in whom my soul delighteth and God says that he would hold his hands and uh, this person obviously is an important person is he not and uh, is it fair to say that the tribe the people that this person is coming from that tribe are the ones who are to be appreciative of the mighty God who has blessed them to have the chosen one from their tribe. You see, uh, when we have a team, let's say basketball team in here or a football team, when they w win the championship and in America uh, they say world championship, uh, the city that the champions belong to that city, they celebrate uh, when these guys win the finals and they have parades and celebrate and they party and raise their voices and all that. Is it fair to say that the people, the tribe of the people that this person uh, is from them should celebrate and uh, get on the top of the mountains and praise God and glorify God? Now, Almighty God has left a clue in verse number 11 that should, should clarify who this person was. Now, this is the explanation I give them when I go to the verse. Who was God's elect? The one that God puts, put his spirit upon him. The one who was to bring forth judgment to, and light to the Gentiles. 
Obviously, the Jewish and the Christians want to claim that person to be one of their own. But look, if you go to verse number 11, that this is what it says. Let the wilderness and the cities thereof lift up their voice. The villages that Kedar does inhabit, let the inhabitants of the rock sing. Let them shout from the top of the mountains. Let them get out, get out there and say, Hooray! They'll say, Hallelujah! Or Allahu Akbar! Because this person is from them. Let them give glory unto the Lord and declare His praise in the islands. Now, who is this Kedar? Who is this Kedar? In Arabic, Haydar. If you go to Genesis chapter 25 verse number 13, you see that it says, And these are the names of the sons of Ishmael, Ismail, by their names according to their generations. The firstborn of Ishmael, Ismail, Nebajoth, and Kedar. Haydar. This chosen one comes from the tribe of Haydar. And Prophet Muhammad came from that tribe. He came from the seed of Kedar, Haydar, the second son of Ishmael, who was the firstborn of Abraham. Would God put in here a name for no reason? Ask these people, why do, why God places a name in here? What is the significance of this? Can you dispute the fact that this Kedar is the same Kedar that you will find in Genesis 25, 13? The second son of Ishmael? Why? God leaves a name in here. To settle the dispute that this chosen one was not from the seed of Isaac, was the seed from the seed of Ishmael the firstborn of Abraham. In here, in Genesis chapter 25, verse number 13. And you know what's so incredible? If you add both of these numbers are extremely significant in religion of Abraham, in religion of Islam, and as I, as I will show it to you later. But 25 plus 13 is 38. And guess what? The only surah, the only chapter in the Quran that has 38 verses is chapter 47, the title of which is Muhammad, the Gentile prophet, who is not in here to defend himself for all the insults that some of these devils throw at him. And their main reason is to provoke some of those ignorant people to fall in trap that these guys lay for them to do un Islamic things for these guys to associate Prophet Muhammad to all the wrong things that these guys are doing. Now, I'm going to take you to Another, before I go to that, I just want to show you this, that uh, every time you find something that these uh, uh, pastors and uh, uh, preachers cannot answer, they go ahead and change the Bible. This holy, divine scripture that they have, they change it all the time. You remember the verses that I showed you? It says the Gentile. Look, in this uh, revised the standard ver version, uh, of the Bible in here, they have changed the Gentile to nations. Yeah, I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. And it says, if it says nations, are the Jews or not a part of the nations on this planet Earth? Look, every time you show him something, and I have uh, places that they change the brethren to brothers. There's a difference between brethren and brothers. But anyhow, I'm going to show you uh, another place where 
Prophet Muhammad is prophesied. Nobody can dispute the fact that the Kedar is the second son of Ishmael. And God does not put a name in, uh, in the Bible in a place as important as that. When talk, God Almighty talks about his elect for no reason. That was to make sure people know who this person was. Now again, we're not in here to glorify any of these individuals. All of God's prophets and messengers came, delivered uh, the same message that the Lord, our God, is one Lord. And then we must love the Lord, our God, with all our hearts, mind, soul, and strength. All of them came in here and said, devote your worship absolutely to God alone. You want to like things good, you want to love things fine, but if you want to worship, worship God alone. But uh, I'm going to take you in here to uh, another uh, place in the Bible that uh, Prophet Muhammad is clearly uh, prophesied. If I take you to Deuteronomy, the fifth book of Moses, chapter 18, verses 18 and 19, in here, uh, God says, is a prophecy. God says, to Moses, I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, their cousins, like unto thee, like you, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. In other words, in here, Almighty God says there's a person is going to come. And this person is going to deliver my words. He is not going to speak his own words. But he is going to be simply a mouthpiece. And God says, my words into his mouth. And verse 19, which is very significant, God gives us a clue as to how to recognize these words that God says I'm going to put into his mouth. And in here, verse number 19, it says, and it shall come to pass that whosoever will not listen to my words, that he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. In other words, he says one of the clue is that this person who is going to speak my words is going to start with my name. There is no other scripture that I know of on the, on the face of this planet earth that that scripture starts with the name of God except the Quran. The Quran is the only scripture that starts in the name of God. Most gracious, most merciful. And the first revelation that was revealed to Prophet Muhammad was that Iqra bismi rabbuka allazi khalaq read in the name of the one who created. That was the ful ful fulfillment of the prophecy which was made through Moses. The first verse revealed to Prophet Muhammad, read in the name of the one who created. Now, let's get back to this one because this is something mind-boggling about this that I can challenge the highest IQs on the face of this planet Earth to come in here and see if they can do anything close to the Q in the Quran. Now, the geometrical value, I've shown this before, that the geometrical value, the, the geometrical value of the first statement in the Quran, which is Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in the name of God, most gracious, most merciful, is 786. Now, if you go to chapter 50, verse number 1, Almighty God says, Q and the glorious Quran, Qaf wal Quran al Majid. Q, God, and the, you know that the first, uh, uh, the first letter of the name Quran is, even in English, is Q, in Arabic is Qaf. So it's easy for the people who know Arabic to realize that when God says Qaf wal Quran al Majid, God Almighty is talking about this letter in here, which is inside of the letter Quran. Qaf wal Quran al Majid. Uh, we've been blessed by Almighty God 
to know all the details about the letter Qaf in the entire Quran. And uh, if uh, anybody who goes to this uh, website in here, they can go ahead and actually download the entire well, Q in the entire Quran. And with this and other things that I will talk in the future, I will challenge highest IQs on the face of this planet Earth to see if they can duplicate anything like this. Now, if you go to the 786 verse in the Quran in which the letter, letter of occurs, this is the 786 Letter, verse in which the letter of occurs, you see that in, in these 786 verses, the word God is mentioned 786 times. But what's so incredible in here, if you add all the verse numbers, all these 786 verse numbers, you get 786, 78. You can see again 786 in here, but 78 is an awesome and important number in the Quran that I will show it, God willing, in the very near future. But now look at this. The number of the Qafs from the total number of the Q, Qaf from the beginning of the Quran to this verse, chapter 7, verse number 95, is 18. 19. If you count all the Qafs from the beginning of the Quran to this verse, the 786 verse, it's going to be 1819. And what is this in here? 1819. 18 and 19. And in here, I know this for a fact, and people can check it out to find out. Prophet Moses was 95 years old, actually, when this prophecy occurred. He was 94, 5 years old. He was born in 1525 BC. He was 95 years old when this prophecy took place. And in here, you see the exact verse number in here. This 786 is so important in the Quran. The first verse revealed to Prophet Muhammad, Iqra bismi rabbuka allazi khalaq. Read in the name of the one who created. Read Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim 786. This also is very important, the 786. There is there is one surah in the Quran uh, and that is not prefixed by this 786, by the Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, and this surah is surah 9, and uh, in here, if you go, you see that this too is pointing as the, what they have done to this surah concerning two verses, and this points out to the fact 168 that surah 9, the correct number of the times Allah is mentioned in surah 9. This is the only surah in the Quran that doesn't have Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim is 168. And I challenge all the scholars and ulama to come in here and prove this to be wrong. This 786 is so very extremely important. But let me show you something in here. In here, let me read these prophecies again. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like you, Moses, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. So in other words, he's not going to speak his own words, he's going to be simply a mouthpiece, and then God gives the clue that he is going to speak in God's name. Now this is chapter 18, verse 19. And this is the, the, one of the major specification of the Quran. It start with the name of, with the, with the Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, which is 786, and 92 is Muhammad. 92 is Muhammad. And in here, you see that 666, that for 2,000 years, 
have been pushed down the brain of the people that this number is the mark of the beast actually is the other way around is uh, is a number is a it, it points at something which is going to bring the corrupted foundation of idol worshippers down to the ground and it is God's will that I proclaim I'm the person through whom this uh, was revealed and uh, I know that the, the true the numerical identity of the Quran at the Quran that it starts with the Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim and came through Prophet Muhammad and was prophesied in Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 19 is 666 and uh, I will have a video presentation maybe two concerning this issue and I will challenge the entire Christian community from the top to the bottom to come forward and challenge me if they want in any televised public debate and bring on their scholars and even their Holy Ghost with them if they want. Now you add these numbers, what do you get? You get 33, 60, uh, 63. These numbers, how, how could these numbers come come here? After this prophecy was made through, uh, made through Moses, after Moses came Jesus who lived 33 years and Muhammad who lived 63 years. Could this be a ma human manufacture? And that's 19 times 177. The first surah in the Quran has seven verses. So the 177th verse in the Quran is, take us, is going to take us to Quran chapter 2 verse number 170 that says when they are told follow what God has revealed herein. They say we follow only what we found our parents doing. What if their parents did not understand and they were not guided? Now, in here, Almighty God in the Quran uh, says, uh, chapter 17, verse number 36, that you, we must not accept any information unless we verify it for ourselves. So in other words, the, the true religion of Islam is not a religion of forcing somebody to believe in certain ways. Almighty God says, no, 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 no. Do not believe. Verify. Get involved. Get involved. Study. Challenge. In the day of resurrection, uh, we're not. Uh, ignorance is not going to be an excuse. Almighty God says, I've given you the hearing, the eyesight, and the brain, and you're responsible for using them. So we must not believe anything unless we verify it. So it is important for us to get involved in this. You remember uh, the number that I showed you in the verse uh, uh, 516? That uh, uh, basically Almighty God says, uh, there's a prophecy about the Quran that what Almighty does with this Quran. The Quran that starts in the name of God. And here I'm going to show you the same number in the Torah, in the Old Testament. Two of God's prophets, messengers, uh, uh, I point uh, Adam, uh, Job, Ayub, and Solomon. And uh, the, uh, these, are, these two individuals were at the very end of uh, the two spectrums. One of them, Job, uh, because of all the sufferings that he suffered, all the hardship that he endured, and then on the other side of the spectrum was Solomon, who uh, was, had the plenty, and God had blessed him with all kind of uh, uh, material possessions, and of course knowledge. And uh, what's so incredible the geometrical value of Ayub, which is Job, is uh, 19. Ayub, Aleph is 1, Ya is 10, Vav is 6, and Ba is 2. If you add the numbers, you get 19. And he is the one who suffered the most in accordance to what we read in the scripture. And the one who had plenty was Solomon. And Solomon, uh, the geometrical value of Solomon, Suleiman, 
was 190. That's what we want to talk about in here. Suleiman. 190. Now, in the songs of Solomon, in the songs of Solomon, uh, I'm going to read some verses for you. And, uh, of course, uh, people say what they want to say and they, what they believe what they want to believe. But what, what people need to understand is that uh, God Almighty would not come in here and say, Okay, fellows, there is going to be a messenger whose name is going to be Muhammad and who is going to be the seal of the prophets. Uh, God doesn't make it so easy. Only those who are truly sincere at heart, they are going to be able to see it. Jesus himself spoke in parables. Did everybody understand, uh, understand all that Jesus was saying? No, because it was God's will that he speaks the way he did. In here, we're talking about an encrypted message. The Quran is an encrypted message. It is not a regular book. The mathematics of the Quran is mind-boggling. Like I said, even when you talk about one letter Q, you can challenge the highest IQ on this planet Earth to see if they can duplicate anything like this Quran, far beyond human manufacture. But Almighty God would not come in here and, and say, okay, this is name, the name of this person is Muhammad. You remember the name, verse 516? In here, he says, his mouth is most sweet. Yes, he is altogether lovely. Whose mouth could be sweeter than the mouth of a, a person who is going to speak the word of God. Now, in here, of course, uh, the, the Christian scholars and the Jewish scholars, they're going to say, no, these verses are related to, uh, to one of the wives of Solomon. Solomon had many wives, and one of the wives of uh, Solomon, and he's, these are the descriptions that he has given about the Solomon. Well, if you want to believe that, that's fine. But look, first of all, when you follow the description that is given in these verses, 11 through 16 through 15, you see this person was really a handsome person, was a good-looking person. And then, of course, his mouth is most sweet. Yes, he is altogether lovely. In Hebrew, this altogether lovely is Muhammad, Muhammad, the name of the Muhammad is spelled out and they have concealed this in the scripture. They don't want to talk about it. They don't want to believe it. And of course, there is no compulsion in religion and only who are truly sincere. We're talking about a message that is given in a, is an encrypted message, talking about a person that through whom a book that comes, and this is not his words, it is an encrypted message from Almighty God. Now, the name of Muhammad, the name of Muhammad is 92. Now in here, if you add the numbers 517 to Muhammad, you see it is multiple of 19. But this number is not just another number. This is a very awesome number. Quran was sent down through Prophet Muhammad. And the first surah in the Quran that has seven verses, the title of which is the key. Right at the beginning of the Quran, Almighty God is given us the key, the key, Al-Fatiha. And uh, when you, when we utter Al-Fatiha in Arabic, our lips touch 19 times. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Malik Yawm Ad-Din 
ایاك نعبد و ایاك نستعین اهدنا صراط المستقیم صراط الذين انعمت عليهم غير المقدوب عليهم ولا الضالين 7 verses 19 times our lips touch and you know what's so incredible these 19 times that our lips touch is a coded message this is a coded communication a key for us to establish contact with our creator do the salat 15 times it is because of the letter mim you cannot say mim or m and keep your lips up your lips much must touch and you cannot say be bestow you cannot say it unless your lips touch the sound comes out 15 times because of the letter mim the geometrical value of which is 40 and four times because of the letter be ba which is two and the total adds up to 608 his mouth is most sweet yes he's altogether lovely they say but look if it is the name in here don't change it just put down the name do not conceal the information in the scripture the Quran was sent down to Prophet Muhammad and the first surah the first surah it gives you the same exact number 608 which is 19 times 32 and 32 the title of surah 32 in the Quran is prostration let us all ask almighty God for guidance let us all prostrate before the mighty God and ask for his guidance and ask for his mercy let us all in the name of God establish peace amongst ourselves let us stop concealing information to the so-called scholars here there stop deceiving people stop the deception the vision is not from God the vision is from Satan throughout the history the most vicious murderers they have done the killings in the name of God and religion that's not from God there is nothing holy about being murderous killers let us pray to Almighty God that he guides us let us pray to Almighty God that He allows His light shine upon all of us to see the truth from the mighty God who happened to be one and the same for all of us. Praise be to God, Lord of the universe.